we welcome Jeff back onto the show from Zoo Montana. And this time he has a new friend with him. I mistook it for uh, Yoda, the white tree frog, but this Jeff is a salamander. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I thought I'd keep amphibians going today just because amphibians are so important to you and I. They actually breathe the air, and so they're the first indicators of something that's wrong in the environment. We want to save these amphibians. And the tiger salamander, look at the size of this beauty. He is the biggest sal terrestrial salamander in North America. And guess what? They're found right here in Montana. People are always shocked when they see them in their backyards here in Billings. But believe it or not, they're here. They are a beautiful animal. They live in the water, of course, when they're young. They, of course, graduate to the land when they're older, and then they're terrestrial for the rest of their life, meaning they're staying on ground. The only time they're going to go back to the water is to lay their eggs, of course, during breeding season. Well, Jeff, I'm going to call you the tiger, cal sal tiger salamander king. There you go. I got it all out. There you go. That's your new nickname. <laughs> I don't want to be called that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk now about some tree recycling because that's a way that uh, folks can get their tree moved on out of the house and help out the zoo at the same time. So tell us about that. Absolutely. Huge shout out to Bright and Beautiful. What a great organization. They set up this tree recycling every year. Zoo Montana just happens to be a drop off spot. Come out out to the zoo, pull into our parking lot. Look to the left and you'll see a giant pile of trees. You probably already have two to 300 trees there. All you've got to do is drive in, drop it off, drive away. It's as easy as that. Those trees are then recycled and used here at the zoo for our trails, for some of the animals that exhibits as well. It's such a win-win situation. All right, and make sure all the decorations and lights are removed before you do that too. Uh, so how, how, did, um, how did things go with zoo lights this, this past month? I mean, um, every time we drove by, there was a pretty big line. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, you know, and thank you to everybody that came out because you made it a record year for us. And I think Zoo Lights was just the perfect event. It was safe. People could stay in their cars. It was outdoors if you wanted it to be through a wagon ride. So we did. We had a record year, best year ever for Zoo Lights. So thank you to sponsors, to, the, to everybody that came out. What a great year it was for us. We needed it. So it really it went far for us. And another event that's popular, um, especially with uh, families with young children, would be the uh, Noon Year's Eve event. Um, so many events getting canceled this year. Is that the case for Noon, noon Year's Eve? Uh, I hate to say it, it is. You know, the annual ball drop out here at noon for the kids. Such a fun, great, super fun event for the kids. And we are going to cancel it. We just didn't feel it was responsible to hold that. However, we are going to do a live Facebook ball drop on New Year's Eve. So tune in at about 1150 and you'll see that ball drop here at the zoo live on our Facebook page. Cool. Well, we'll be doing that at home and we'll have our apple juice toast all ready to go for the noon year. <laughs> We'll toast to you. Yeah. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. And thank you uh, to the Tiger King Salamander. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> we'll Can't be wait. Back. Bye. <laughs> we'll be back after the break.